I'm going to continue today with the last part from our journey with OpenVAS. Last time we ended the session with the updating of the MVT plugins. One thing that we need to do before open up the graphical interface is to rebuild the OpenVAS manager cache. And I will do that right now. We do that with OpenVAS MD. We have here the option rebuild and we are going also to use the progress flag so we can see. So let's try it. I hope it's not taking too, too long. While it's uh, rebuilding the cache, let's go over a couple of the options here for the OpenVAS MD. As I told you, the OpenVAS MD is not used only for the daemon part of the as a manager component, but is also used as a configuration tool. And with it, we can create delete users. And very important, we can create more scanners. So if you want to have a distributed architecture and install more scanner hosts, uh, this is where you, you can create uh, more scanners. And you can also create, um, um, configure certificates for the scanners and things like this. So two important features of OpenVASMD is the creation and management of users and also the creation and management of uh, scanner hosts. So that's out of the way. All right, so we are back. The rebuilding of the cache database has just finished. It takes a couple of good minutes until uh, it processes that. So now we are ready to go and log in uh, to our graphical front end where I will show you a couple of more things. So let's do that. So the meats and potatoes of uh, operating this interface is configuring targets and scan configs and put those elements together in a, in a task. So I will show you how we, uh, how we can do that. So here in the targets menu, here we have the default entry for the local host. I will uh, create a new target. So I can take you through the process. Just choose a name here. A target can be a single host or multiple hosts. You can specify it in here. You have the, the possibility to specify to type them in manually or to type them or to have them in a text file and upload the text file here. You can put multiple things in here. You can put IP addresses like this, or you can put uh, IP prefixes like this one, and even host names. Host A. I don't know. Host A. I can exclude a couple of uh, IPs if I want. Particularly, uh, for example, from this prefix, I want to exclude the, the first IP, let's say this one. And for the port list, these are uh, predefined lists of ports that will be scanned for vulnerabilities. In my experience, this one right here, the 2000, uh, the top 2000 TCP and top 100 UDP, is covering more than enough for my needs but if you want you can go and use a larger list a quick note the larger the list of ports of course uh, the longer it will take for the scan to finish so be aware of that i will go with this one the live test is something that uh, openvas is doing before proceeding with the actual scan so before running all the mvts it wants to be sure that the particular host is alive. 
and you can uh, do that with the default mechanism config configured in the scan or you can have one of these other predefined ones in here go into the scan config default it's more than uh, than fine for me so let's create our target cool and we can see it in uh, in the list of targets here the port lists that I showed you earlier can be configured here. I want to configure to create a credential set to put it in the in the target. So I would say admin with the password. Um, sorry, the name is the the name of the credential set. The login is actually the, the username that we want to, to use to login and the password is right here. If we want, you can see here we can uh, configure also SSH uh, keys for logging in, but uh, user password credentials is, uh, is fine for me right now. Oops. I think I know what this error is and I have a page here that is documenting uh, this particular error it's actually a bug and what it tells us here is that there is this directory missing from uh, from this path so let's go on our uh, command line and check that And uh, the path was here. And we are looking for the GNU PG folder in here. And you can see there isn't any. And I will create one. Here it is. So let's try again uh, with creating the credential right now. I will go with a uh, back. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, the credential has been created successfully. Sorry, I wanted to, to show you the list of credentials. There is this one credential here, and we can use this credential in uh, our previously configured target. We edit it, and we will use it for SSH. You can also use it for other protocol if you want. So, this is our target. And let's see the scan configs. So, scan configs are predefined lists with the NVTs that we want to use in a particular task. So as you can see, there are a couple of predefined ones in here. One thing that I already showed you is this here, that there are uh, scan configs that can affect your services. Um, let's go and create a new scan config from scratch. If you want, you can start your uh, your scan config with a base, like full and fast, or you can start from scratch, literally, with an empty scan. Or if you want, you can, or if you have it in an XML, you can import it uh, from an XML. I will go and create my scan config. And first thing, I will go to the edit button here and here you can see categories of NVTs and you can enable all the NVTs in a particular category so let's say we are enabling uh, enabling brute force and buffer overflows and um, denial of service 
and right now if I am saving this config you will see that these uh, checked ones are enabled with all the NVTs in the category. You can see here 14 out of 14. These two radio buttons right here are from a feature of OpenVAS that uh, allows us to automatically include and activate future NVTs that might be part of this particular category when we are doing uh, database updates. So if we are going with this uh, arrow trending up, the future uh, NVTs will be, as you can see here, new NVTs will automatically be added and considered. And if we are going with this default arrow, horizontal arrow, no new NVTs will be included. So this 14 that we have selected right now will stay the same. And if we want, we can choose particular NVTs from this category. If we go and edit here, here are the 14 NVTs from the selected category. And we can deselect a couple of ones. And if we say and if we save the config, you can see here we have only a total of eleven NVTs. And let's get back to to the list. So as you can see, the number has been modified here also. So this is how you select NVTs for a scan config and we can even go deeper in, in the configuration of the NVTs. For a particular NVTs, you might have some, uh, some specific settings, uh, like uh, the timeout, which is uh, available for, I think, all the NVTs. But there are some of them that uh, have uh, other settings also. You really need to, to invest some time in studying all the NVTs that are available in the database and get familiar with, uh, with this stuff. So we have selected our uh, NVTs and here we can uh, configure some other stuff for the, for the scanning. I'm not going to go into all of these, uh, these settings, there are quite a few. As I said, you need to, to invest some time and uh, go over all this in order to... As I said, you need to, to invest some time and uh, become familiar with, with these settings. So let's see, uh, so let's see the created scan config is this one here, my scans. As you can see, there are uh, configured to a total of uh, 2000 uh, something. As you can see, we have activated uh, a total of three, cate uh, of three categories. And from these three categories, we, are, we have a total of 2258 uh, NVTs activated. So we have the target, we have the scan config, we are now ready to go and configure our task. So we click here, we choose the name for the task, and I'm not going to use my and and I'm not going to use our uh, new created target because that were because those hosts are, do not uh, really exist, and uh, I just shown you that for uh, for demonstration purposes. But I will go with the local host, which we can uh, scan, of course. We can add the results to the asset management. I don't care about this. The task is alterable, meaning that you can edit the task after you created it. I want to be able to do that. I don't want to auto delete reports. And here is the OpenVAS scanner that I want to use. I I have only only one scanner, the default one. For the scan config I will use uh, 
full and fast. And for the network interface, I'm not sure what is my network interface, so I will check that right now. Is this one right here? Uh, here is a setting that specifies how OpenVAS will go over the list of uh, targeted hosts. I I am fine with uh, these defaults and I will create the task. And now in the list of uh, in the list of and now in the list of tasks I have it right here and I can start it. All right. Now I don't know how much it will take to run this task, but um, at the end, you will have a report here with all the findings. We don't have time in this lesson uh, to wait for this. I will show you this scanners page that I talked about. So again, you can have multiple scanners. The installation process is creating this default one, which is on the same host. And if you want, you can create more of uh, of these scanners and uh, used it uh, in a distributed fashion. So here you can see the um, database uh, overview. As you can see, uh, we have quite a few NVTs in the database. And uh, that's it. So hope this has been uh, helpful for you guys and hope to see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.